Hi everyone, today I'd like to show you more gameplay in the Order of All Things Seasonal Event. In my previous video I shared a deck guide on um, a Gurney deck, and today I'd like to show you some hopefully more difficult matchups. Alright, so remember we start with Corinthia, spawn a Cave Troll, and if we go first we use our stratagem on our Cave Troll. The reason I'm making this video is because the previous video, like all of my opponents there were kind of bad. Um, well, I, would, I shouldn't say bad, but like all the wins were really easy. And uh, today, hopefully I can show you some um, like more hard fought wins. Okay, after you've played your defender, go ahead and play your bloody mistress on the same route. He can, like your opponent can do whatever. Like it doesn't really affect you. Like if he takes out your defender, you just put up your other defender. If he kills that defender, you just renew that other defender. And if for some reason he's able to get past like all three defenders, then um, he might not have another tall removal to get rid of your Arrakis Queen. So it's like, I, I don't think he can play four tall removals or if he does, his, the rest of his deck is like super low provision. So you don't have to worry. Okay, he, he gave up. Okay. Okay, let's go to another game. Okay. Hopefully this is a strong opponent. All right. Looks like this is a Reaver deck. Okay. So for Reavers, uh, the hard part is hitting Sabbath because they are really good at shaving off your points. All right. So uh, if you can hit Sabbath, then um, you're pretty set because they don't really have targeted removal. Okay, let's see what he does. I usually don't see Reavers run this. Ooh, Yennefer's Illusionist. Interesting. Okay. Uh, well, we're just going to continue with our play. I'm guessing the Cave Troll will probably die next turn, but that's all right. Oh, it is Reavers, okay. All right, uh, he may have a heat wave, so I'm gonna put up my second cave troll. I wonder if I wanna lock this guy. Behold can get pretty up there in points. But no, I don't think I'm going to lock them. Because uh, next turn, I'm going to spawn four um, like little drones. What are they called? Drones, yeah. Four drones, and then Yennefer's Illusion will probably have to target those. Okay, here we go. So we do this here. Let's see, when we consume this, that brings up, yeah, we'll hit Sabbath. So let's go ahead and trigger Thrive. We could trigger this in the uh, melee row, but it's okay. Abaya is not that important after he's already done his deployability. And then we'll go ahead and eat our Arrakis Queen. Now we have a five in nine shot of, um, our opponent not hitting one of our gurney fruits. Um, 
but we'll see if we get lucky, right? Because maybe maybe they get lucky, hit that four and nine shot of getting one of our gurney fruits. Oh, he used his lock on Arabaya. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and use our scratch. Nice. Now it would be really good if he could kill our Corinthia so we can put our Sir Scratch in our melee row. Oh well, no such luck. Let's go ahead and get uh, our Orchid Mantrap. So then we can imbue more units with Thrive. Let's see. We want to hit our Corinthia. We want him to hit our Corinthia. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm going to use this on Orchard Mantrap, imbue these two with Thrive, and boom, there's only two targets at one power. I didn't expect him to have a second lock. Uh, if I did, I wouldn't have used Orchid Mantrap. I would have renewed our uh, our Cave Troll, but it's okay. Let's see. Uh, we could renew our Cave Troll, Trigger Thrive again. So that'll be uh, 11 points plus 8. That's 19 points. That would put us ahead. Um, no, but I want to save this for our Sir Scratch. So I'm just going to pass. All right, round two. All right, we are going to banish. Oh, uh, locks are good, but we are going to banish uh, Margarita and also Jennifer's Illusion. Okay. Okay, he passed. Let's see, we're gonna use Xavier Lemons. The one we want to banish the most, let's see. So he has six, six, four, uh, five. So Margarita or Yennefer, which is a bigger threat? Uh, well, we have cave trolls, right? So we have two defenders. So I don't think Margarita is a big threat. Let's go ahead and banish Yennefer. Okay, Squirrel is all right. Uh, I don't think we need three locks. We do need a Purifier, though. We do need a Purifier. Okay, we can get Purifier through Oniromancy, uh, which means this Whispers uh, won't be able to get our second Witch's Sabbath. Okay, so let's see. Let's go ahead and use Witch's Sabbath on the range draw. All right. Next turn, if he doesn't do any damage this turn, we're going to use Renew on our Sir Scratch. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that, because that'll trigger Sabbath. Renew on our Sir Scratch. Put them right here. Oh, 
Okay. Next, we want to use Oniromancy to purify. We can get Peller. Peller is a better purifier than Crow's Eye. So let's go ahead and put Peller. You can put him in the melee row. We'll go ahead and purify our Sir Scratch. That way it triggers a Thrive. Okay. Of course we could have locked these Reavers, but um, it's more important that we uh, activate our Sir Scratch as soon as possible. Okay, Garrison. We're probably just going to uh, kill this guy. Let's go ahead and get rid of Reaver Scout. Alright, Sir Scratch is soaking up a lot of the damage, uh, so that's good. Uh, do we need to banish anybody? Not really, huh? He might have, uh, what's it called? Necromancy, but that doesn't really matter. Oh, I, I suppose we should have locked a unit. What does this guy do? Formation, give an enemy unit bleeding. Okay. Well, thank you for triggering my thrive. All right. Let's uh, lock and reset this guy. Uh, and then we can... Oh, he gave up. Okay. So that's how you win matchups against Reavers. Okay. Let's play another game. All right. The previous game was actually pretty good. It was a little bit challenging. Okay, this looks like it's a Harmony deck. Harmony Symbiosis. Okay, let's... Let's help point them, because um, this deck, it's all... Whoa, what is that? Prism Pendant? Whenever you target an allied unit with a special... Give it vitality equal to the special's provision cost. Whenever you target an enemy unit with a special, give it bleeding equal to that unit's provision cost. Oh, equal to that special. Okay, I've never seen this being played. Interesting. This might be a really good game. Okay. Hmm. This is tough, because if I use this, right, on our cave troll, he'll have one power, but this can activate bleeding, which gets through armor. Um, huh, okay, if he does activate bleeding on this, we'll just own Neuromancy for our Veil of Forbidden Knowledge, but I think uh, his strategy is to get, just give himself vitality rather than give the opponents bleeding, because bleeding triggers at the end of our turn, so we have time to counteract that. He's using all these cards I've never seen before. Okay. Well, our strategy should hold up regardless. All right.
these symbiosis decks, uh, like they accelerate quickly, but not as quickly as ours. So I don't think they can, they can beat us. How'd this guy get 10 Vitality, Devotion? Spawn a Young Dryad on this row. Okay, well, I mean, that's fine. He, his row is almost maxed anyway. Order, remove all Vitality from an allied unit. Why'd he give up? Ah, oh well. Maybe he, he knew that he couldn't accelerate as fast as us. Yeah, this is the second time we've played one of those decks today, and uh, they've just given up. Okay, maybe they know, maybe they know. And it saves both players some time. Okay, let me just switch my journey real quick. Okay, let's go to Regis. Okay. So that was three wins. Let's go for another. Oh, we're getting a lot of these, these Koyotel decks. Okay. Well, I'm never one to complain about free wins. So let's go ahead and beat this guy. Maybe they'll surprise us, who knows? And hand us our first loss. Oh, he's going all in round one. This is like 13 provisions. Yeah, that's a lot of provisions. Okay. Hopefully, oh wait, I thought that this was a horror quax. Never mind, it was something else. Okay, interesting. Really is going all in in round one. Does this move a unit to the other row? It does. Hmm. Oh, it damages the unit by two. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and put our defender in our ranged row. Uh, but then he could just heat wave this right now. Okay, let's just put it in our melee row. I was thinking ranged row so that uh, we have more space to play Sir Scratch. But I guess um, this is more important to preserve Bloody Mistress. All right, let's see what he does. Saskia? This Saskia? What does it do? Deploy spawn something on this row and get some ability based on what you spawn. Okay. All right. 
right. I'm wondering if we can catch up to the, uh, our opponent in round one. Hmm, if we can't, we might as well just pass. Let's see. Two, eight, so 16. We can get 16 just by playing Sir Scratch. 16 will put us to 64. 19 ahead. And then he boosts himself by, I'm guessing, like 7 or 8. And then he plays another card. We use... Um, Hmm. Use Oniromancy on. Might just pass. And then beat him in rounds two and three. I think that might be the play here. We have a setup graveyard. And he used everything. Yeah, let's just go ahead and pass. I want to keep Sir Scratch. All right, we drew Alyssa Henson, Xavier Lemons. Do we need to banish anybody? Let me take a look. Um, this guy, possibly? Not really. Yeah, we don't really need to banish any. Oh, maybe this guy. Whenever you play another relic. Yeah, may maybe this guy. Okay, because he doesn't have a deployability. He has like a continuous effect while he's active on the field. Okay, finish your drawing. Okay. Let's go ahead and banish this guy. This guy has a deploy ranged ability. Okay. Banish you. Let's see if he goes for it. Oh, he is going for it. Interesting. Well, that's cool. Let's go then. All right. Get back our witch's Sabbath. That might actually not have been the ideal play. That seemed like it was uh, not the right play, actually. I should have played Renew on our Corinthian and then get our Sir Scratch. That would have been much better. Ah, uh, shame. That's a shame. Okay, um... That was a pretty bad misplay, um, because then, well, I suppose I could still just use Sir Scratch regularly. That's our next best move. Okay. No, that was not the next best move. I should have consumed this using Oniromancy. I'm just making misplay after misplay. Okay, well, we can do that now. Let's go ahead and get this dude. And then we'll consume her. I should have done that last turn, so I could have used this on uh, Corinthian. Oh, well. We're still well ahead. Okay, uh, I'm going to lock a guy, and then I think that should be good. And then I'm good to pass. Okay, 
He gets final say, but we do get to go first in round three. And do we have another defender? Yes, we do. So we'll get our defender and two gurneys. Or if we're unlucky, we'll get three gurneys. Let's see. Uh, let's get rid of Demeridium Shackles. This Veil is really good. Um, let's see, his graveyard. Order Melee. Well, we'll have to give him that. It can't be helped. We don't want to deploy in the range row, do we? Because we have the, the possibility of getting two gurneys. Or three gurneys. Hmm. And we need a purifier, huh? But we can get that through on your OK, we are good. OK, so big question. Do I want to use it in the melee row or the range row? Let's do it in the melee row. We do give him an order. Oh, no, we did get three. Three guarantees. We, we missed out on our defender. Dang it. Oh, well. Okay, so our options are renew on our defender. Defender is nine provisions. Uh, then we can't get Sir Scratch. Can't get Sir Scratch, but then we'll be able to get Orchid matchup. Um, I think that's a safer option. Let's go ahead and renew our cave troll. <clears throat> Hmm. Okay, so he moved our cave troll. Let's see. Okay. Let's go ahead and use Veil of Forbidden Knowledge on our cave troll. That puts our range row at 1820. We could use this, but that'll only get us to 23. We'll have to wait a turn. Harmony, Harmony, Harmony. Okay, so he, this guy can activate Harmony two more times. Thinking, who do I want to reset lock? Um, actually, do I even want to lock right now? So this is 1821. I need to get somebody on our range draw, okay. Let's go ahead and get our Peller. Let's purify this guy. Get rid of that extra infusion. Okay, and now our range throw is at 25. Okay. All right, uh, should we lock this chameleon? So that's eight points. This guy is five points. I think we need to lock the Weeping Willow. All right, and then let's go ahead and consume our Whisperous. <clears throat> All right, so his last card has to swing for 25. Oh, well, it almost did. Good game. I thought Harmony would be like free wins, but he had a lot of Rome manipulation at the end there. So um, it took us more turns than we would have liked to get our Sabbath. Good game, Harmony. That was probably the best Harmony deck I've played for a while. All right. Let's see if we can get our fifth win. 
Nice, Nilfgaard. Power of six or less, okay. So I'm going to use Corinthier, spawn a cave troll, but obviously I'm not going to use my stratagem because then we'd get him, we'd give him like a stronger defender. He can seize this guy if he wants, but it's just a one power defender. Okay, so now we can play our regular cave troll, and now we can give it Veil. I'm expecting two more tall removals. I'm expecting Vilgeforts, and I'm expecting Yennefer. There's also uh, Treason, which hits uh, adjacent units. So I'm gonna put my Gurney on the left of my Corinthia rather than on the right of my Cave Troll. Nice, he purified it. Um, I do think he can uh, either Vilgeforts. Vilgeforts wouldn't be too bad, actually. But um, he probably has Yennefer in hand. Actually, does he have Yennefer? Yennefer is not a tactic. So he probably only runs tactics. So I'm not that scared of Yennefer. And if he Vilgeforts, that just saves me a leader ability. So I don't really care. He probably has a lock. If he has a lock, that would be annoying. Um, let me think. Yeah, let's go ahead and consume it in the range row. Okay, and if he locks me, I'll just unlock and then use my leader ability. That sounds good. I think even with an assassination, that would bring me to seven power and he can't seize me. Oh, he just passed. Uh, well, you can pass, but I'm just going to set up, if you don't mind, and I'll just beat you in round three. All right. Okay, so we're just going to... Well... No, we uh, we need to play a guy in round two. The reason is he doesn't have three cards in his grave. So our, uh, our Witch's Sabbath won't really do anything. Uh, okay. And he has tactics. So he probably has Hefty Helge. Hefty Helge, we could could lock it. Yeah, I think this is okay. This is okay. Uh, do we need Whisperous? Not really. We don't need Whisperous because um, even if we do get to Witch's Sabbath is, he won't have enough cards in his graveyard to make use of them. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of his assassination. That was actually pretty stupid of me. Why did I do that? Because uh, now he could seize this and then banish our stuff. But we have so much. So it doesn't really matter. Okay, we are going to pass. Interesting. He played two cards, two units. So we could use Witch's Sabbath two times now, right? And get f like three units plus one unit. So, hmm, 
Maybe it's worth it to get another. We'll see. Don't think I'll need Peller. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'll need Peller. Get rid of Peller. Uh, another lock is always nice. Hmm. Do I need these many locks? Three locks in a single round against Nilfgaard? No, I don't think I need that many locks. Okay. Let's see what he does. I have to be wary of his Stefan. For sure he has Stefan. Okay. Three cards, four cards, okay. Which is Sabbath in the melee row? Yeah. Do I need to play this first? No, I don't. Okay, let's do it. Okay, that's as good as we could have hoped for. Like, if we were super lucky... Uh, oh, no, we only had one, uh, one Bloody Mistress. And one Gurney, so... And several Gurneys. But uh, this is good, this is good. He probably still has an assassination that he could use on this and then seize it. Oh, he has Vilgeforce. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So. What do we want to do? We want to use our Renew. Our Renew on Cave Troll in between our two Bloody Mistresses. Actually... Do we want to use it in between our two bloody mistresses? Because then he has, he could have treason. That would just blow up both our bloody mistresses. Hmm. He could have treason. Uh, anyway, it's worth a shot. Okay, but definitely not in between. I wanted to put it in between originally to protect against assassination, right? So then he can't seize it. But um, it's too risky in case he has treason. Oh, it's just Hefty Helge. Okay. Well, I will go ahead and lock you. Because if he had Hefty Helge and then played Stefan, that would be um, kind of annoying. We didn't get lucky with Vilgefortz. If he summoned our Peller into our melee row, that would have been over for him, because then we would have already had Sabbath. Okay. So I'm guessing he's going to hit our cave troll and then seize it. He's thinking whether to hit the cave troll or the peller. Okay, so he hit the pellers because he's going to seize. Okay. Mm, let's see. How many cards? He only has one card dead, huh? If he had another card dead, that would be nice. Um, do I want to get Renew back? Or do I want to get... Corinthia and another Sir Scratch. Because he only has one card dead. Great. Okay. Hmm. Let's get back the Renew. One Witch's Sabbath isn't isn't enough. Or one card in his graveyard isn't enough. Okay, I see here. So we have 20. That's uh good enough for Sabbath if I place her scratch and then eat our Alyssa. But do I want that? No, I don't. I want two Oniromancy, 
for renew, renew into Corinthia, Corinthia into Sir Scratch. That is the play. All right, here we go. Onir Mancy into Renew, on, Renew into Corinthia, Corinthia into Sir Scratch. Okay, and that should be 25, and it is. Okay. So this turn, he, he has to get rid of Sir Scratch. Otherwise, he's kind of screwed. Oh, cool. He was able to get rid of Sir Scratch. Okay. Uh, but can you handle another? And if he does play his Sir Scratch, he's going to trigger our Thrive, right? Because we have our own Sir Scratch on the field. I hope he does. I hope he, like, he's not aware of Sir Scratch's secondary effect. <laughs> so he's triggering Thrive for us two times. Yes, three times. He's triggering Thrive for us three times. Okay. And, uh, of course, we are just going to... Uh, do I want to lock his granny or his fruits? Uh, kill, a, kill a fruit, probably. Right? Because um, I want him to use his Sir Scratch. Nah. Lock his granny. Okay. Okay, uh, let's see. We don't want to be ignied, do we? Uh, so let's go ahead and use our Veil of Forbidden Knowledge on you. He has several assimilators, so one, two, three, four, five. He has five assimilators. So every time he plays a Sir Scratch. Ooh, he gets nine. Interesting. Okay. We can boost our pillar, I guess. Uh, I think he's going to... Oh, we have final say? I thought he had final say. Uh, this will be close. I think he might outpoint us here. We'll see. Because, um, like... He's at 146. Uh, will we get there? Oh, it's a draw. Okay, I see. Good game. Yeah, I didn't notice that he had uh, so many assimilators, so each time he played Sir Scratch, he also got uh, another point through assimilate. Good game, Paulo. Pablo. Yeah, this guy's a good player. Good, good player. Wow. He has a full collection, doesn't he? Yeah. Jeez. Good game. All right. I think that was a great game to end it on. Um, we didn't lose a single game this set, uh, but we did tie. Um, I think, uh, thinking if I could have played it differently, like, we still had one more point on Veil of Forbidden Knowledge, one of the vitality points that, like, didn't have time to go through. Maybe if I played that one turn earlier. Yeah, uh, I'm sure there were things that I could have done differently to get, like, that one extra point. But, um, yeah, we won four, we tied one, and, uh, hopefully you guys can see how this deck performs against, uh, other matchups. All right, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.